Hello students, welcome back to the chapter. So in the last lecture, we discussed about the Newland law of octaves. I think you remember we had done the limitations, see everything we did about the Newland law of octaves. You know, even after the rejection of Newland law of octaves, many scientists continued to search for a pattern to arrange all the elements. Then came a Russian chemist whose name was Mendeleev. He came into picture. Now let's study what were the investigations, what were the works done by Mendeleev. Uh, before I tell you about the Mendeleev's investigation, I'll tell you something about Mendeleev himself. So he was a really interesting person and a very, very, very loving son of his mother. You know what? He dedicated all his success, everything to his mom. Isn't it nice? Mm, so, I think you should also do some, this thing someday in your life. Okay, so let's come to the main points. Uh, when Mendeleev started his work, 63 elements were known. So, let's say when uh, the Mendeleev classification was given at that time, 63 elements were known to the scientist. He studied all the elements. So one by one, he started studying all the elements. He studied the atomic masses. So first of all, the main thing he studied was the atomic masses. He also studied the physical and chemical properties. Now, in the physical and chemical properties, uh, okay, so what he did after that, he took 63 cards and he wrote down the properties of each element separately. I couldn't draw very much, but uh, still I have tried something. So, for example, this was card number one. He had written hydrogen here. The mass number was written. And he has written the formula of the compound of hydrogen with oxygen. Similarly, sodium. Mass number was written. He has written the formula of sodium when it combines with oxygen. The same he did for chlorine, for potassium, for beryllium, for lithium. Like he did for all the 63 elements. What then he did was he sorted out the cards with the similar properties and he started pinning them on the wall. So he pinned all the cards on the walls according to the similar properties. And what he observed was something which later on proved to be unifying principle in chemistry. And this was like marvelous thing who, which was never ever expected before. Uh, one thing I would like to tell you among the chemical properties which I was telling you. I told you atomic masses. I told you physical and chemical properties. And among the chemical properties, he basically concentrated on the compounds of the elements formed with hydrogen and oxygen. Like for example, if he has taken sodium, he studied how sodium reacts with hydrogen and he studied how sodium reacts with oxygen. Similarly, if I have written for, uh, let's say, chlorine, he studied how chlorine will be reacting with hydrogen and how chlorine will be reacting with oxygen. So like this, he studied the properties of the compound formed with the hydrogen and oxygen. Now the question is, why specific priority, like why special uh, consideration to hydrogen and oxygen? This is because hydrogen and oxygen were the more, are the most reactive elements and they are known to form compound with almost every single element known. Okay. The formula of hydrides and oxides I have written here was the basis of the classification of this Mendeleev's periodic table. So guys, this is one mark CBSE question. What was the classification of Mendeleev's investigation? So you have to remember there were two things. The first consideration was given to atomic masses as I told you. But if you simply write atomic mass, you will get only half the mark. The Another important thing you have to write, you have to mention is the formula of hydrides and oxides formed by the element. Okay. Like for example, I'll just give you a simple example. If I'm talking about the hydride for carbon, so I have written CH4 is the hydride of carbon and the oxide was written as CO2. But then I have to write it for almost all the elements. So instead of writing CH4, I have like Mendeleev has basically written RH4 where R represents the element and CH4 means uh, RH4, right? Similarly, for 
CO2, he has generally written the formula as RO2. Okay, I will show you this in this Mendeleev's periodic table. So here you can see he has written R2O and RH. These are the compounds formed by these elements. Similarly, in next in next uh, column, he has shown RO and RH2, R2O3 and RH3 and so on. Okay, so this is the Mendeleev's periodic table. And now let us look at the periodic table. You do not have to mug up. So one good thing about uh, this table is you do not have to mug up the table. Let us just look it from the examination point of view. So according to Mendeleev, he said that the properties of the elements are the periodic function of their atomic masses. Oh my goodness, this is like something which is way beyond our understanding. So let's divide it into small, small parts and study. So Mendeleev said that when you start arranging the elements in the order of their increasing atomic masses. So first thing is you have to arrange the elements in the order of their increasing atomic masses. Okay, so this I think is clear. Then when you do so, then the property, then the elements with similar property, they will get repeated after certain regular interval. Let's see. So for example, hydrogen is atomic number 1.00, atomic mass 1.008. Okay. So then after hydrogen, we have lithium, which is 6.9. Then we have beryllium 9.0, then we have boron 10.8, then we have carbon 12.01. So like this, I Mendeleev arranged the elements in the order of increasing atomic masses. Okay, so while he arranged them, you can see that hydrogen and lithium are lying together. Then after that, lithium comes sodium, after sodium comes potassium. So he said that the elements with the similar property, they will get repeated after certain regular interval. And finally, he gave a short form to his law, which says that the properties of the elements, they are the periodic functions of their atomic masses. That means the properties of the elements are basically the function of atomic masses. So as soon as you change the atomic mass, the property of the element will be changed. So like, like in maths, you write y is equal to 5x. So y is a function of x. You change the value of x, the value of y changes. Again, change the value of x, value of y changes. Similarly, I can say the properties of the element are the periodic function of their atomic masses. You change the atomic mass and the property will be changed. Fine. But there is a specific significance given to the word periodic. Why not simply write the properties of elements are the function of their atomic masses? Why writing the, the properties of the elements are the periodic function of their atomic masses? Periodic means which repeat itself after a certain regular interval. Okay. Now see. The Mendeleev's periodic table, if I move on to that, it is uh, classified on the basis of oxides and hy uh, hyd hydride formula, as I told you. Now, if I move further, you can see there are basically seven horizontal rows in the Mendeleev's periodic table. So, these horizontal rows, which I talk about, this is first row, second, third, four, five and 6. So there are actually 7 horizontal rows. One is missing here and these 7 horizontal rows will be known as periods. So periods means 7 horizontal rows and there will be 8 vertical columns. So 8 vertical columns if I show you. So this is 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th vertic vertical columns are there and these vertical columns will be known as groups. Okay. Now, each group is further divided into two subgroups. So, see, subgroup A, subgroup B, A, B. So, first seven periods will be divided into subgroups A and B. However, the last group, which is known as group number 8, it is not further subdivided into any groups. Okay. However, you can see in group number 8, there are three, three elements in one particular period. So, three elements you can see in one particular period. Okay, 
these eight groups are basically in indicated by the Roman numeral. So I will not write them as one, two, three. Rather, I will represent them as one, two, three in the form of Roman numerals. Okay. Now see, the first half of elements up to calcium are placed in the upper left hand corner. See, so I am starting with hydrogen, placing it on the left hand side. Then lithium left hand side, beryllium left hand side. So you can see up to calcium, I will be placing the elements on the left upper, see upper side and the left hand side of the corner. Okay. Whereas the second half of the periodic table, they occupy the lower right corner in each column. So you can see we were here. So this is the lower right corner. So you can see zinc is here. So like this, the second half of the periodic table is placed. Okay. Now, having done what Mendeleev's periodic table is, now we have to see some good points and some bad points about the periodic table. But if I teach you today, it is going to be like too much. So let me take a break here. You first have to study this much very properly, very sincerely. You, you, you do not have to mug up anything. Just go through this lecture once again so that things are there in your mind. And in the next lecture, I will tell you what are the good points and what are the bad points of the Mendeleev's periodic table. So guys, I hope this is it for today. We'll meet once again in the next lecture. Till then, see you soon. Bye-bye.